Right. Good morning and welcome to the Prevention Coalition of Mercer County. If that's where you intended to be, you're in the right place. And we are super happy to have you. Um, as some of the discussion before um, we started formally, you know, we're here to help improve lives and to especially to get our children the resources that they need and to help our community stay strong. I am Melissa Arnold. Um, my um, <clears throat> my sidekick, my my equal actually is a uh, Ruth Del Pino. If you want to introduce yourself, hello everyone. I am uh, obviously from the Mercer Council and PCMC, but I am also the Drug Free Communities Coordinator. I help run the um, coalition meetings, and uh, Melissa is someone I work very closely with, and am honored to work with as well. All right, and. Um, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, the wonderful Barbara Spreckman, whose um, fancy shoes I'm trying to fill. Um, so we're glad to have you. She is professionally grandmaing all over the place, and she has the cute pictures to prove it. So uh, we'll go through and just quickly introduce ourselves. Um, after uh, after our main meeting, we'll have an opportunity to announce any events or um, go into a little bit more detail about your um, about your organization. But for right now, if you'll just give your name, your title, and your organization that you're with, uh, let's start with Angela Campos. Good morning, everyone. I'm Angela Campos. I am the prevention educator at Mercer Council. I work with both Melissa and Rose and a few of the other people on the call. I provide life skills training to middle schooler and high school students throughout Mercer County, and my targeted area is Trenton, Hamilton, and some room for my grant to provide services in Ewing. I'm glad to be here. Great. Sergeant Martinez. Good morning, everyone. I am Sergeant Martinez with the New Jersey National Guard uh, Counter Drug Task Force. We work with mapping, grant writing, and um, SPIF training. We know the seven strategies of prevention and uh, look into helping Mercer County the best we can. And our kitchen is so beautiful that it's so yeah. personal. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, Stacy Ross and I, Dave, I think you're a package deal this morning, right? Yes, we're a package deal. Hi, my, good morning, everyone. My name is Stacy Ross. Uh, I'm a CPRS. I am the Director of Outreach for Recovery Advocates of America. Uh, I work for the Mercer County ORP program, and I also voluntarily run uh, two female houses for a nonprofit called A Future After Rehab. Hey, everyone. Dave DeCamp. I'm the Patient Navigator and Program Coordinator um, for the Mercer County Opioid Overdose Recovery Program. All right, David Savalas. Yeah, you bet. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Dave Savalas. I'm a treatment advocate with Recovery Centers of America, and I cover Mercer and Middlesex counties. Hey, Denise. Hey, good morning, everyone. I am Denise Nasidis from the Children's System of Care. I am the statewide prevention coordinator. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to hop off in a couple minutes for another meeting, but I'm here until 930 if you need me for anything. We really appreciate that. Um, I think most people have put their contact information in the chat. If you haven't, go ahead and put it there just so um, people can reach you if they need to get a hold of you. Okay, Chrissy. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Chrissy Isaac. I'm a community relations representative with Princeton House Behavioral Health. I'm covering for Nancy Zeroshin as she's out for a very well-deserved vacation. Um, so nice to meet you all. I'll leave my chat, um, information in the chat just in case if anyone has any questions or needs for Princeton House. Thank you so much. All right, next we have Shamika. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Shamika, and I'm a senior at Ryder University, and I'm interning with Jamie Wright with Alcohol, Drug, Sexual Assault Prevention. Thanks so much. Um, Eric. Morning, family. Uh, I'm Eric Van Eck. I am uh, the Recovery and Prevention Coordinator at the College of New Jersey. I'm the recovery guy at uh, the College of New Jersey, so I'm grateful to be here. Hey, Carol Nicholas. Sorry, it took a while to unmute. 
Um, hi, I'm Carol Nicholas with the Greater Mercer Public Health Partnership, and I'm also a chair of the um, drug collection program that we have here at the council. And if anybody's interested in volunteering with me, um, and also I have a meeting at 932. So I just wanted to say I found a connection with the DEA. And I now know that 3,941 pounds of drugs were collected last year. So that is our goal to beat that. So I put my email in the um, um, chat. And if anybody is interested in joining that committee, um, please answer me. Thank you. Thanks so much, Carol. Al Grupper. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Al Grupper, uh, East Windsor Alliance, longtime coalition member. Longtime champion. We appreciate you being here. Kelly Nitty, it's so good to see your face. Hi, my name is Kelly Nitty. I'm the Associate Director of Campfire New Jersey. We provide youth development and prevention programs to youth pre-K through high school um, throughout New Jersey, but we're uh, mainly saturated in Mercer County. Next we have Gisele. Hi everyone, good morning. Um, Gisele here from Partners of Prevention Coalition Coordinator, thank you. Hey, Raquel. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Raquel. I'm working for Partners in Prevention with the Hudson County Coalition as a coalition coordinator. Thank you so much. I see um, both of you are, are coalition partners. We appreciate it. Next, I have Maggie. Good morning, everyone. Maggie Giovanni with Footprints to Recovery. Good to see everyone this morning. Next, I have Aaron Baldwin. Hello, uh, my name is Aaron. I also work with Partners in Prevention as a coalition coordinator, uh, working primarily in Hudson County at the moment. We're spending a lot of time uh, dispersing information on drop boxes uh, or safe places to dispose of prescription drugs, but we work with other areas as well. Okay, Barb. Hi, everybody. Barbara Spreckman, formerly the coalition coordinator in Mercer County Council, now full time grandma and an aspiring artist. Oh, there's no aspiring. You're an artist in many ways. All right, Lisa. I'm Lisa Kaufman. I am with Mercer Council. I wear many hats at Mercer Council. Um, help everybody out. Um, especially passionate with helping Barb with the senior adults and our older adults programs. Everybody be nice to Lisa. If that's the first rule, be nice to Lisa and it will open many doors. Um, Vanessa Peters. Good morning, I'm Vanessa Peters. I'm a family support advocate with the Sharing the Hope Family Support Center and I serve Mercer County. Oh, and I should say, we, we support family members who are affected by substance use disorder. Sorry, I wanted to say that real quick. No, we appreciate that. That's a very valuable resource. Chris Freeman. I'm Chris Freeman, and I'm the Assistant Director of Alcohol and Drug Support Services at the College of New Jersey. All right, thanks for being here. Next, I have... The, the pictures keep shifting. Um, Gina Dudley, I believe. Good morning, everyone. I'm here representing Phoenix Behavioral Health. Um, I'm the director in the Cherry Hill location. Nice to be here with everyone. We're glad to see you. I, I actually didn't know there was a Cherry Hill location. I've no. only ever been to the one in Ewing. So thank you. We're glad that you're thank here. You. All right, Miss Nadira Keaton or Reverend, is it Reverend? Am I right? I don't know. Um, it's, it's either one. I'm Nadira Keaton. I'm representing Oak Integrated Care and Haven of Hope Counseling Center. And I am now downtown Trenton. The last time we spoke, I think I was in Lawrenceville, but now I'm the CCBHC director in downtown Trenton. Wow. They are blessed to have you. I am, I, I already know. Um, let's see. I we're shifting again. Uh, Vanessa De Rosa. Uh, 
Oh, she might have stepped away. Hi, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Vanessa DeRosa, Program Coordinator at Mercer Council. And Katie Onateri, I believe. Good morning. Yes, it's Katie Onateri. Um, I have a private practice, Life and Family Guidance here in Ewing, and I work with families. I'm an LMFT as well as a LCADC, so I work with families, uh, couples, and individuals. We're so glad to have you back. It's so nice to meet you last time. Uh, Pollock. Hi everyone, I'm Pollock. Um, I'm a prevention associate at NJPN and I mostly work with the regional coalitions, the PFS project and Impact Engine. Uh, Jamie. Oh, her mic is not working. Jamie Wright is um, our hardworking director of office, assistant director for the Office of Community Standards from Ryder University. We work with her with the ASAP program with Shamika. Um, that's the alcohol, drug, sexual assault prevention program. And uh, she's done an excellent job. And then I believe the phone number is our very own Carol Chamberlain. I don't know if your mic is working. No. Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm um, Carol Chamberlain, formerly the health officer of Lawrence Township. I am happy to still be a member of this committee, and I'm also a vulnerable population outreach coordinator for West Windsor. Anybody has vaccination needs, booster needs, um, or any COVID resources that you need, please give me a call at the West Windsor Health Department. Thanks. Absolutely, we have several people on this call that can, can hook people up. Um, it's still not over. Uh, it's been interesting to go into the schools and see people's smiles again. Um, but I, I kind of go with trepidation and cross fingers. So, you know, hopefully we're seeing this big light at the end of the tunnel. It's really hard to believe that this weekend it will be two years since the world shut down. It's, it's you know, all these memories come flooding back. Um, but look at us. We're still here. We're still working hard. We're still trying to protect those that we love and um, you know, still trying to help people live healthier lives, um, whether they want to or not, I guess, um, <laughs> as we have learned in many, many uh, avenues. Um, so I wanted to give a minute to Jay Sheree and to Anne. I believe I left you out of the- oh, Did we get Chris? Chris, did you talk? Chris Freeman? Yeah. Okay, all right. But Sorry, I did sorry, please. Everyone's moving for me too. Yeah, right. So um, Anne and Jay Shree, if you guys want to want to take a second. Give it to Jay Shree. I talk too much. Hey guys. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm not in the best of health today. Uh, been sneezing away. So apologize for not being on the video. I have a big red nose. Um, <laughs> um, my name is Jeshri Kalvichwala. I'm a resident here at Lawrence. Um, my kids are in college, but I am so fortunate to be connected uh, with people like Anne, Melissa, Barbara, Ruth, and now all of you. So I'm here. I'm also part of the project graduation at Lawrence High and uh, trying my best to be see oh, if I can be of any service. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Anne, do you just want to is there anything you want to report you, you, on? You just know how much we all love you and how much we truly appreciate everything that you do. I, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, seeing more and more of what I see on a daily basis, it's, it's disheartening, yet it's very hopeful in knowing that there's so much support out there that if we collectively stay together, we, we don't give up. We, we, we will make it happen. You know, we will definitely make it happen. And my my wheels are spinning and I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool to have like a community fair with all of us there? That would be really kind of cool to, to get the information out to everyone. And, and I would offer the stadium at my high school to just, you know, get out there and put out a booth and allow the community to come in and just get information that they don't necessarily think is at their fingertips. You know, I mean, your support to me 
I can't imagine what you know power we can have in sending all that support out to everyone else that's out there. I'm just thinking brainstorming, you know, kind of stuff. Community health fair. It's, you know, right there at the school where you're already kind of the center during the school year, it yeah. might be a really good thing. We could, you know, we'll see what we could do. We've got the month of May, right? That's mental health awareness month. That's something that all of that's on all of our minds, uh, co-occurring or addiction only, you know, those are those are obviously things that we're seeing, especially young adults trying to cope. Um, all adults try everyone trying to cope. Come on, let's let's be real here. So um thank you so much. And that's a great idea. We will we'll work on that and we'll get that out. Um we um so I just wanted to, to throw this out. I wasn't sure if anybody took me seriously. Did anyone keep a tally uh, during the Super Bowl or did anyone have any comments on uh, what they saw during the Super Bowl, either in regards to gambling or alcohol commercials? Or I know there was one ill-fated um, cannabis commercial that didn't make it, but boy, did they get a lot of attention because they didn't make it. So anyone have any comments on that? The gambling commercials, I think there, there were far more gambling commercials than alcohol, which actually surprised me. Um, so it's interesting to see that shift going. Um, one, I, I happen to say, I was super excited that there was a prevention commercial starring our, you know, Mary J. Blige. I'm like, we're, I'm like, there we go. She's like a 50 year old, she's a woman in her fifties, but she's promoting like preventative care and doing her checkups and doing all of her stuff. And I just was super excited to see that. I was like, that's prevention. That's my Mary J. Blige. So, you know, people my age love the Super Bowl. <laughs> so um, the uh, halftime show. All right, ongoing business. Uh, two weeks from now, March 21st to the 27th is National Drug and Alcohol Facts Week. We did send out a flyer a couple months ago with some of our little, um, little facts on there that you could share like on a billboard or, or not billboard, bulletin board, or just daily facts with emails. Uh, we still would like to encourage you to do that. Oh, I think we just found it. Awesome. It's right there in the chat. Um, it can be something as simple as, hey, did you know that one beer, one glass of five ounces of wine and a shot all have the same amount of alcohol and that it takes your body an hour to process a serving of alcohol, that's a fact. And you know, some people think, well, if I'm drinking this, then it won't be as bad as this. Or did you know that most mis mixed drinks have more than one serving of alcohol? So if you're downing three cups of, you know, jungle juice and a- Those Long time, Island iced teas. Oh yeah, it, it means that you're getting far more than just the two glasses that you thought you drank. So yeah, that's, it's that's actually- yeah. It's just a, it's a flyer that essentially says like, here's how to have the conversation if you want your own national drug and alcohol facts week. So it's not the um, flyer. It's just an outline for you to have your own. Um, and obviously you can steal as much or as little as you want from it, you know, use the format how you need to. Right. So I know, and we're trying to do something at Lawrenceville High School. Uh, we're going to do something um, at assist during Learn Lunch Bunch. So we um, do have some projects going. We're going to be doing some social media um, facts every day. So uh, those are some of our ideas. Feel free to adapt those anyway. And if you want to drop us an email and say, "Hey, this is what we did," we would love we would love to hear it. Um, hey, may I interject for a second, Melissa? Which I, I, I it's a point to ponder for all of you folks out there. I remember I work with teenagers and tweens. You know, I'll make a comment like this: If your friend walked in with a six pack of beer every day in their knapsack. Would you find that odd? And they'd be like, well, that's really weird. Like that would be really weird. But they don't find it odd that a kid brings in a cart full of THC oil and use it every day. And I think that's a message being sent to our youth through the marijuana folks. And I don't know how to address that. We're talking about, you know, national drug alcohol awareness facts and stuff like that, but this is their mentality now. You know, they think, oh, my God, it'd be ridiculous if somebody brought in a six pack of beer, but it's not ridiculous to be sitting in a bathroom 
I think the record now in my high school is they had 21 kids in one stall. One it's stall. like a clown car. Are you kidding me? One that's stall. That's impressive. I, I actually said that. It was, I know I shouldn't have said that, but that's pretty impressive. Like you could put 21 kids in a stall. But I try to gross them out by saying, so where are you sitting? You're sitting on the floor, you're sitting on the toilet. They're like, that's disgusting. I'm like, think about it. You know, so I don't know how to get this message out where they're going to listen. It's it's a challenge. But when you talked about the um, adult drinks and stuff and becoming more aware of what was in them, is that part of your um, program that you do um, for the seniors, um, alcohol awareness? Uh, yeah, it, so it's, yeah, go ahead, Melissa. It's a, it, well, I don't know about what Ann does at her school, but when, we, when we're when we asked to teach about alcohol and harm reduction and party safe partying, we definitely go through it. We have graphics, we show a drink is not a drink is not a drink. They do talk about it in driver's ed, thank goodness, because it is on the driver's test. Um, we talk about it a lot on college campuses. We have poor kits that we show them the different sizes. We have really cool posters that show mixed drinks and how much alcohol they have. So we absolutely try to get that information out. We have posters in all the dorms at Ryder um, and we work with um, tips training in um, at TCNJ. So people is this like a traveling training. show that you put together? Because I'm thinking Lawrence right. is having a health it, fair it's on, always a traveling on show. May 3rd. Right. And this would be really, it's just at the senior center and that would be, you know, that's a population that likes their cocktails. So I think that would be a, a good outreach. And then also Hamilton has one in early June, um, which would be another, uh, and I can connect you with the correct people who are organizing both of those events. We'd appreciate that. We know about also, the one in June. Um, uh, I don't know sorry, Carol, one. one more time. Um, so it's on May 3rd. And May 3rd at the Lawrence Senior Center, yeah. And it, this is for um, seniors, like yeah. senior population. Well, actually, mm -hmm. that's interesting. A mixing like any medicines that they may have with alcohol could definitely be part of that too. Right. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have try and do a drug collection day at that event too. That is something that we do address at the Healthy Outlooks program that Barb and I work yeah. in presenting with the senior adults. We um, we work on that in pain management and. Um, it's a really good program for yes. uh, takes about an hour. Yeah. And if you have a senior population that would like to have uh, that presentation, please, please, please reach out to myself, Lisa, Barb. She is still helping with the scheduling and the administration of that program. It's a great program for um, that population. Um, so that was some of our new business. Another new business is that April 1st is Take Down Tobacco Day. I'm excited for this. So um, go ahead, Ruth. Okay, so um, we just recently went to CADCA in uh, the beginning of February, and they had an, a person who essentially decided to bring their youth into convenience stores because Delta 8 is a new strain of THC that um, they, or it, it's not technically, like, anyway, point is that Delta 8 is Delta 8, okay? And it's it's different, It's it, it hits different. And so we were looking at different places and convenience stores that we could possibly scan to see if they're selling it. And we decided that Take Down Tobacco Day was also a good day to scan um, convenience stores and places that youth occupy a lot um, to see what they're selling uh, when it comes to nicotine juice and things like that, vaping, you know, tobacco products and um, THC products in general um, and CBD products and hemp products too. So we sort of thought it would be an all-inclusive environmental scan where we go all over the county, um, bring our youth with us and possibly do some tallying, see what it looks like and have really good uh, cohesive feedback on um, some of that scan. So uh, just for, for your information, if you didn't know that flavored tobacco is actually illegal, tobacco products are illegal in New Jersey, um, especially for purchase under the age of 21, because you're not supposed to sell to anyone under the age of 21. However, if you go into any convenience store, you can find disposables in a rainbow of flavors. Um, you can find additives, you can find cartridges. So if you see those, just send send us the email. Just let us know. Say, Take hey, a picture, don't send us an people. email so that we yeah. can sort of flag it. Right. So you're not exactly narking because that means we would have to bug the police who are, are very overwhelmed right now. But 
um, we do want to know. We want to know what our children are seeing, what people are interacting with in their stores. Okay, so since that's our, our newer business or our ongoing business, um, we want to stop that and, and have our featured speaker before we go into old business. Um, our, we are super excited. As many of you know, March is um, Women's History Month, and we have, um, yesterday was Women's Day or something like that. And so we started thinking about different things and the way that it affects different populations. And one thing we've been hearing about is the way that medicine and um, some issues that are specific to women um, aren't getting addressed, especially if there's other factors involved, such as race and poverty. And um, we know that it's no different for addiction and in recovery. So we just kind of wanted a, a, a woman's perspective on that. And we thought of Stacy Ross. Um, she is, um, she'll tell you more about it, but she is integral in the lives of women in recovery. And we are so proud to have her as part of our, um, our staff on the ORP program, as well as sharing her, sharing her, whatever. She practically runs Recovery Advocates with Mike Zaccardi. So um, we are uh, so glad to have her here and we will turn the time over to you. And I'm actually gonna spotlight your camera. So tell your dogs to look cute. <laughs> I'll tell them not to bark because they will probably start barking well. at some point. So I am really honored. Thank you so much, Melissa, for the introduction and, um, you know, to, to, for asking me to come on and, and give my point of view. Uh, I was, I have been very, very busy planning two galas and, and, and doing the work that I do. So I basically speak from the heart. I have a few little notes written down. So, um, you know, this is, this is such a, a topic that, you know, helping women, I help males and females, but um, really helping women uh, is, is a passion of mine. Um, you know, I am, you know, I am a woman in sobriety. My sobriety date is April 13th of 2015. So God willing, I'll have seven years without uh, a drink or a drug. And I'm very, very, I suffered most of my life with addiction because um, women remain underrepresented in addiction treatment, uh, compromising less than one third of the clients that are in tr uh, treatment services. So some of the things I can speak first and foremost for myself, um, a lot of the stigma behind it. I looked like I was weak. Um, it was weak to say that you had a problem or an issue. I deal with early uh, at 12 years old. I had something very traumatic happen to me. And a lot of times with especially women, we hold that in because we do not want to let other people see uh, the weakness. Uh, I was traumatized again at 18 and finally spoke up about that. And that's where my journey began. It's, you know, in, in telling on the things that happened to me, um, you know, fear, we are fear based as it is um, people that suffer with this disease. So I, I let fear run my whole life for most of my life until I was 44 years old. Um, you know, it's not for lack of love. It's not for lack of, um, you know, people being there for me, my parents. Uh, it was just that fear that, that I, I'm fear driven. And I did not want to speak about uh, anything that had to do with my addiction. Um, you know, and, and in the community, uh, I see it a lot with, uh, we just did an outreach in Trenton. So, a lot of what you were, you just mentioned, Melissa, about, um, you know, the population that poverty stricken, um, you know, there's, there was a woman that, you know, that we were at the outreach helping and I've seen her at other outreaches and uh, she's, she's a young woman um, and she has basically been in group homes her whole life. She has no family. Uh, she, you know, she, she suffers with some mental illness. That's another big part of this uh, goes hand in hand with, with substance use. Um, and, and my friends over at Recovery Centers of America, David Savalas is on the call, as well as my friend, Megan Reeves. Um, you know, we got together and, and they offered a, a full scholarship to a private treatment facility for 30 days. And this woman called me the other day and uh, she, I completely had goosebumps because helping women is, is such a big part of, of what I love to do. Uh, she had the hair standing up on my arms, not that they're really hairy, but, um, you know, and, and just this, just this, all the things she talked about, um, you know, how 
there wasn't any help for her. Uh, she, you know, she had so many challenges with being homeless, living in abandoned buildings, not knowing what services were available, uh, no family to speak of. Uh, like I said, she grew up in group homes. And when somebody greets these people who have been to th those levels and, um, you know, just understanding, we, we actually, she's doing so well and she, she is so happy that we, she has a plan and she has an aftercare because aftercare for women is the other barrier. These women go to treatment. Uh, they they get maybe with Medicaid, they get about three weeks, four weeks if they're lucky of treatment, and um, they're you know they're overloaded. These Medicaid facilities, there's not enough. There's not enough facilities, especially uh, women for women um, that will help with all of these issues. Um, and then they get out and they go right back to what they know, and they know the streets, and they know how to make easy money. Uh, especially the women that are um, selling their souls on the street for the next one. They're the hardest ones to reach because that people are ready for, for you know, they're out there. Predators are out there and, and the client, you know, the clientele keeps the money coming in and they so much harder to get women off the streets that are, that fall prey to this because they get addicted to the lifestyle. Um, and then their self-worth and everything else goes down the tubes. They feel they are damaged goods is what I used to call myself. And uh, I'm not worth this recovery process and it's gonna be too hard. Um, so, you know, that that's a big challenge that, that I deal with because they, they don't have anything else. So recovery advocates, um, you know, we have, we just got a grant from Hamilton Township. We're very grateful for, we are able to supply them with clothing, whether they want cigarettes, not that I am, one of the things when you take away my drugs, I needed cigarettes for a little while. I did quit smoking, but, um, you know, but that took time, you know, so we provide them with food if they need it, lift transportations, uh, transportation to the treatment facility. And then after we, we hook them up with an aftercare process and, you know, we have a scholarship for this female to, to go into one of my friends offered an IOP scholarship, a private one, another um, we, we have funding for her to go into sober living. Um, that is why I love what I do with the sober houses for afar. It is voluntary. I do not get paid for anything. Um, and it is, it is, that, that is another, that is a, such a passion to help these women and, and let them know that they too can become something with, you know, because we, we come in defeated, you know, we have so much, so much trauma and, and guilt and shame. And then there's, the other barrier is women who have children. Um, you know, they're afraid NIFAS is going to get involved. And, um, you know, that's, I just dealt with, I mean, every week I deal with at least five women that are afraid to, to go into treatment because they're afraid that their children are going to be taken away from them. So, and then you deal with the ones that are pregnant. Um, we have Catholic charities and, and um, Homefront. Um, you know, there's a lot of great, resources in this area. Um, I just feel like we need more of those. We need more mommy and me programs. Uh, so these women, the, the one program I use is the Home for Greater Expectations, and they have such a long waiting wait list for these women. Uh, I think we need more, more facilities for, for these women to go to that are, are safe places for long term, because to hit this disease, you're giving people about three weeks. Uh, we know that it takes about two years for the brain to change uh, with, with the depletion of the serotonin levels and, and the dopamine. So we need longer treatment stays. Um, you know, one of the people that we, we send uh, people to Pyramid, which is in Hamilton, they see this problem and they recently just uh, opened up 90 days. So our other female that we helped will get 90 days of treatment. They, they opened the long-term um, Medicaid facility for them. So that is, you know, the, a huge problem. I, and, and I know that, um, you know, the women I also deal with have toxic relationships. Um, they're with men that do not want to see them get clean and sober, uh, or they're afraid to leave to go to treatment because they're, they're afraid the relationship will, will end if they go away and, and better themselves. Um, you know, I, 
I know for a fact in my sober houses, that's one of the big things I deal with is the relationships that women get into. And, um, you know, they, they put that before their recovery. And we talk about that mostly at every house meeting we have, um, you know, and then getting, getting themselves acclimated. in. I think we, we do a, a great job in Mercer County. There are a lot of services. It's just, we need to be out there more. We need to be showing what this county provides for, for women and, and men as well, but for women in general, um, you know, so what I do is I, I'm one person though. So I hope that other people, you know, I know I can't be the only one in town, but I like to get them to treatment, um, help them build relationships uh, with, with females in, in, in a sober setting, uh, get them into sober living and, um, you know, teach them, get them into some sort of a 12 step based program, whether it's AA, NA, uh, there's all different programs, opiates anonymous, there's a ton. So try to hook them up with as, as much support as they can get. Um, because we feel so alone, you know, I beat myself up for years, um, uh, thinking that I was not worth anything. And, and I have been to dozens of treatment centers, um, you know, dealing with depression, dealing with PTSD, um, you know, and, and I, I've been to some of the top treatment centers in, in uh, you know, from Florida to, you know, into Syracuse, New York. So um, I just didn't know how to break that cycle. So when, when I believe we need to lift women up, we need to um, show them that they are worth it and, and open up more resources for them to deal with. Uh, mental health is huge. And, um, you know, finding programs. I, I love Phoenix Behavioral. Uh, they have been so wonderful with a lot of the population uh, that I deal with and getting them right in because a lot of times we're waiting two weeks for them to get an assessment. Uh, I just had a woman call me yesterday. She got right into um, Phoenix for, for an assessment today. So, you know, just I think we just need to have more uh, resources available for uh, people that, that struggle and, and uh, for women in general, uh, specialized programs that deal with trauma that, that offer them some of the things that these private treatment centers uh, offer people. Um, so basically that is all I have for my spiel today on that. I hope it was long enough, Melissa, but I'm, I'm really uh, honored to be here today and I thank you all for listening. Well, thank you so much, Stacey. Um, as I said, you have such a beautiful perspective from the side that needed to be helped and the, the side who's trying to help and lift now. And, and we appreciate all that you do in, in our communities, especially for the women. Does anybody have any questions? I did see Katie had put some things in the chat about needing um, some people for a mother-daughter group. Um, so that might be some connection that you could have there. Um, it's absolutely one of the things that we want to do is to have these connections within our coalition to get these resources to the people who need them. So um, I'm seeing some things come through on the chat. Any questions? Lisa, I just first and foremost, congratulations coming up soon. Yes. Really proud of you, way to go, keep working it. It's, it's doing great stuff for you. So Thank you. congratulations on that and feel good about it. Question I have for you is when you work with these women, which thank you so much for doing, um, because we are a forgotten population and I, and I agree wholeheartedly with that. When you start working with them, um, you know, I, I, again, I, I, my specialty is adolescence and I think about this. When they talk to you about their journeys, do you find that certain things happen to them that trigger them into addiction early on? Or is it later in life? Like, have you... Have, do you have any ideas or any thoughts on that? So I do believe for, for me personally, I, I believe I had the disease when I came out of the womb, um, but I do know trauma sparked that addiction um, because it was a way to, it was my coping mechanism, just like a lot of the other women. It is that fear to talk about what really happened because it we hold that guilt. Like, did I do something wrong? Did I cause that person to do this to me? And um, you know, we need, we need really, we need to get that help immediately. It's just, unfortunately, sometimes we're, we're afraid to ask for that help. And, um, but yes, it, it is a trauma and things like that do and spark off that addiction early. 
Uh, just to add, um, you know, uh, I think more than anything, um, and this is more of a reflection rather than a question, but that investment is so important. And when you invest and show people that you care, then that's where they um, have a soft place to land. And I think more than anything, a lot of people are just looking for soft places to land when things hurt them. And so when we give them the opportunity to say, hey, we found this program for you, or hey, you know, let me walk with you to the facility, it gives them enough investment to know that they are more than just what happened to them. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And it is a soft place to land. That's a beautiful way to put it, uh, Ruth, um, because I just dealt with a woman that got into Phoenix, but she was afraid. She was afraid to go to a, a meeting. And, uh, you know, one of the girls that runs the house that I, I uh, oversee in Bordentown, she actually walked to her house and walked her to the meeting. Like we need, you know, that's what we need to do as women. We need to hold someone's hand until they're comfortable enough to do things on their own. And then we also had Christy mention that Princeton House also has a women's trauma and addiction, PHP, IOP, accepting Medicaid, Medicare, and most commercial insurances. So um, wonderful program. I went through it five times, the women's <laughs> trauma program, but it was a great program. I just wasn't willing. Wow. That definitely puts a different spin on it, Stacey. It's a great program. <laughs> but, but you made it. You know, and yep. you know, every, every journey built to where you are, you know, every step of that journey built to where you are now. Thank you so much. Um, I love being able to highlight, um, being able to highlight people's oh, journeys. Eric uh, has his hand raised. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to, to ask a question. Thank you for sharing. And um, yeah, congratulations just for today. Um, uh and so right, I'm uh I'm wondering, so you know, I definitely I'm in a 12-step fellowship and just in general, I see like that the relationship um piece. You know, what is some advice that you give to women early in recovery? A lot of the times they're taken advantage of, other times they're um willing participants in that codependent relationship, which is very distracting from early recovery. And uh just wondering, uh, dealing with as many women as you do in these houses, um, these recovery houses, is there like a, a solid piece of advice besides find other women? Because there are, there is a lack of um, experienced women in a lot of these meetings, uh, get families, you know, relationships, things get better. And, you know, they, there's a lot of things to take care of. And I, and I see women with time stray away from most general meetings, you know, women's meetings are great places, but is there just kind of inform, you know, guidance or advice that you give somebody early on um, to kind of like reinforce that maybe a relationship isn't great for you right now? Right. What what helps me with afar um, is no sleep outs for 90 days. And that is if you follow all the rules, um, you know, we take, you know, they are on a blackout period. And, and I am not a relationship expert, which I tell them, but I have been in, you know, I've been with Dave for 10 years, but, um, you know, I try to tell them that when we take the focus off of ourselves, um, it, it's, you will struggle for so long because it, it takes such, I try to give them my experience that I had to focus directly on myself, even though I was in a relationship that relationship had to go on the back burner until I truly worked on all the causes and conditions of why I picked up a drink and a drug as a normal coping solution, which it wasn't. And, um, you know, I just, these girls unfortunately have to learn a lot of times and I am that soft place for them to land when they do say, Cece, I, I should have listened to you. And that's what I used to say to everybody. I should have listened to you. Um, but I will always be that soft place because we are going to have bumps in the road and we are going to make mistakes. Um, and then, you know, that, that blackout period does help and, and, you know, taking away certain, certain things, you know, that, that are given when you follow the rules of the house. Um, that's why I believe in recovery houses. Some of them, you know, a lot of them that are structured. Recovery yeah. Hope I answered that. <laughs> Women are hard headed. So we don't, we learn by our mistakes, unfortunately. So. <laughs> well, I just think any kind of like situation like that where you're supporting each other in and and knowing each other's you know weaknesses and and experiences i can see how that must be such a great environment and probably a lot of emotions a lot of emotions in there 
Um, Sergeant Martinez, I, I saw your hand up. Uh, yeah, um, my question was more so uh, for Ruth and Melissa, actually. Um, in regards to uh, takedown day, uh, tobacco, takedown tobacco day, you said that was April 1st, right? Yeah. yeah okay, so um, what exactly do you have planned for that? Like, I, I know you said you wanted to do a community scan, right? And you wanted right. to look into what stores are currently like selling tobacco or tobacco products mm -hmm. and then what kids are hanging in those areas, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are interested, we can help with that data uh, once you have collected it, um, whether it's mapping or I'm, I'm trying to do a lot of focus on like uh, plugging the data and like all the numbers and the names and words and stuff like that. I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to put it into an infographic so that the community can look at it and actually see and look at the data without having to read through it. Cause nine times out of 10, we're not going to read all those words. So uh, I've been working on trying to condense a lot of that into an infographic for the community to see with their own eyes, what exactly is the issue. And, um, uh, would like to help with that process so if, if there's any chance in the future that you guys collect that data um if you send it my way we can do mapping and we can do an infographic as a combo and we can give that to you guys to push out to the public and work Absolutely. off that data going forward yeah um, thank you as so as if that's something that you guys are interested in yes <laughs> well as soon as um, i saw you come on i was like oh my gosh right, so, we need to talk to him. <laughs> so. 100 percent right, no, so i'm, I'm more than happy with. to uh to work with you guys awesome yeah. all right so uh melissa for you uh i have a request letter um just so that we can get it on paper that we're going to be working with you guys going forward right. um i can send that i can send that to you and um once you get the request letter in i can plug you guys into our system and we can get working full-time with you guys so Thank um you. yeah i'm looking forward to it uh i'll send you that today and Whatever data you guys get, just let me know and I'll work with what I got. Thanks again, Sergeant Martinez. No problem at all. Thank you. Um, also, just as a side note, and thank you, Stacy, so much for you know saying what you said and being vulnerable and open to your experiences because that's hard. It's hard to to share that and to to own all those parts. And I think more than anything is that um, teaching women to own those parts of themselves is so important. And so thank you so much for, for opening up all of that for us. Um, and also to understand that, you know, power-based violence is obviously more than just one gender, but that also means that a lot of the time in our society, because we live in a binary and the way that we socialize our communities are binary, um, women and men, uh, especially women, are more vulnerable um, in many aspects. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, there's there's no exception. There's just what is. Um, and so if we look at everyone and understand their situations, then that's important too. Um, but gender-based violence and power-based violence is a thing. I um, mean, to understand how each part and each binary uh, interacts with it is important for us to know as well. Um, so Melissa, anything to add? No, just again, thank you so much, Stacey. Thanks for being a part of us and uh, thanks for sharing your experience and being such a resource and uh, congratulations. We're so excited. And Melissa, uh, I, I just wanted to add real quick because I have to hop off. I have a ton of stuff to do. I wanted to thank you always. all again for listening. Um, but Recovery Advocates of America is holding their 10th annual gala, which helps us raise money for, for client care. Uh, it is April 2nd at 6 p.m. at Mer Mercer Oaks Country Club. So I have my email on there. If you are, you know, if you want to go, we would love to have you. So thank you all. I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Stacy. Angela, I saw your hand go up for a little bit. Did you need something? I, I just wanted to, to plug in some information. Uh, so statistically, the average victim of interpersonal violence leaves their perpetrator seven times before deciding that they're ready to terminate the relationship. And nationwide, domestic violence shelters do provide supportive counseling. And one of the most underserved intersections is with substance abuse providers or treatment centers. So I, I definitely advocate for the possibility of bridging with the local shelter to see if 
there's more support that can be provided within your organization. I know in Hudson County, the domestic violence program actually runs a sober house so that they're already intertwined in that capacity. But I do know that here in Mercer, we don't, or they don't. Um, so just throwing that out into the universe and possibly just bridging services. Thank you so much. Thanks, My email. Yeah, and you, yeah. So everyone- Put your email also about. on the minutes. Yeah, and my my email, I keep messing it up, but I think you guys have seen it several times by now. So just, you know, find one of my old emails and reply to it because apparently I can't type this morning. Um, for those of you who aren't near a window, like I got um, distracted. The, uh, there's really like huge snowflakes coming down. It's really weird. Like I wasn't expecting that, especially since two days ago, I was like in capri pants and flip flops. So Whew. Anyway, so we are going to move on to some exciting announcements uh, that I promised in my meeting reminder this morning. And Ruth is going to go ahead and, and start those for us. If you're ready. Wait, give me a second. I just got a lot of chat coming my way. All right. So um, first thing, do we want to talk about um, uh, nominations? Yes. I'm trying to see what order I have it in on the agenda. Yeah, yeah you do. Okay, so essentially we are searching for nominations. Um, we have our PCMC Prevention Awards coming up right now as we speak. I am putting in the PDF for the nomination form. Um, if you see anyone that has performed outside of their job description or anyone that just does it really well, um, you know, in your community and you say, you know what, this is something that, you know, people need to be recognized for, then please do so. Um, we have already, you know, we, as our, as just looking through our communities and this year in general, we have people in mind um, because they've been so at the forefront. But if there is someone who seems like an unsung hero, please let us know. Um, and, you know, just download it, do what you got to do, you know. Um, so these are prevention leaders in general. They don't have to yes. be a member of the Prevention Coalition, but boy, we sure would love them um, to join us. <laughs> any um, volunteers so too, or any person that like is really, you know, prevalent in your community too. Right. And it doesn't necessarily have to be drug and alcohol prevention. It can be prevention in other, in other forms as well. We recognize prevention and we also understand the intersectionalities. I mean, Stacy talking about it and Angela kind of confirming it, domestic violence, there's an overlap there. There's an overlap in, um, you know, faith-based organizations, you know, sexual and consent, uh, sexual assault consent, those kind of prevent, or, you know, diseases, um, infections, they're STIs now, yeah. So STI prevention, like, you know, prevention, prevention is prevention is prevention, and it all helps keep us healthy and um, safe as a whole. And um, you know, from a financial standpoint, any insurance company will tell you that prevention saves a lot of money, um, but then they don't back it up. But that's just my it argument. Different there. conversation. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, the nominations, um, that's an exciting part of our prevention um, awards breakfast. And but... we have a nice announcement for that. <laughs> that was the very anticlimactic. Um, so we are going to be having our breakfast, uh, PCMC breakfast for our awards in person um, at the uh, facilities at the Mercer Council building, um, which we are super excited for because this will be the first time in two years that we'll be able to see everyone in person and in the same room. Obviously mask mandates, um, depending, uh, will come through. Um, we have certain forms for people to fill out. We will definitely give you more information on the protocols. We're going to try and be as safe as possible. It is a breakfast. So, you know, bring your purse so you can fill it up with muffins on your way out. Um, at the same time, in general, just, you know, be ready to engage with people in a different way, which I'm super excited for. And um, also, with the, we do have a certain capacities for people being in the building. So we will have a sign up sheet first, first come first serve for people who um, we have allotted spaces for. Um, in general, though, I think that we'll be able to house everyone, which I'm super excited for. So thank you so much. And uh, can't wait to see you in June. Ruth, do we have a date for that? 
Uh, that is June. Give me a second. I got my calendar up. Melissa, do you have it otherwise? Because my calendar's not loading. June, 8th. June 9th or sorry, June 8th. Seriously, can you can you not hear me? It's June 8th. June I did 8th. it. I knew it. That was the, mine. I did it. I did it. The so. second Wednesday in June. Now those nomination forms for the volunteers um, that is due on May. Oh dear. I forgot the date already. It was uh, we April 13th, April 13th. So by next meeting. So I need these by next meeting. So you have a month. It's not that hard of a form. You don't have to give blood samples or, you know, um, transcripts or anything. You just have to tell us why. Why are you nominating this person? Um, and we'd be happy to, uh, to read about that. Next just to confirm it. It's going to be at the same time as this regular meeting, correct? Right. What we usually do is we start about 8.30 just because there's breakfast involved and mingling and, and stuff like that. And uh, people have, have some schedules. So um, there's that. Now, in conjunction with this, something that we're very excited about is that we are also rebooting the Gita Romahan Scholar Scholarship. It's $500. It's for students who are from Mercer County or who are studying in Mercer County, but it also includes those who are taking a different route other than academia, including um, any kind of certification program such as uh, CPRS, uh, CHES, CPS. Um, uh, yes, there's a whole list of them. And even if it's not listed on the application form, uh, we absolutely might consider it. We um, this one does have an essay requirement and transcripts and letters and, and different things, but they are very uh, well listed on the form. Um, we will be sending that out with our package um, and we want you to promote this to as many people as possible. In the past, we've had very few applicants. I mean, it's $500, so some people are like, that's nothing, but hey, my opinion in college, every little drop helps. I mean, that's books for a semester if nothing else, or books for most of your classes for a semester, <sighs> depending. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, if you're going into any kind of discipline that is going to be helping mental health and substance use um, in, in the future, we would love to hear it. We would love to, to meet these students um, and to, to celebrate them and to help them. So we are pushing them in the high schools more than anything, but that doesn't mean that you may have um, a 45 year old friend who is looking to get their um, prevention specialist certification. It, it applies to anyone and every age and anyone that would need it, um, send it their way and you know go from there. I mean, obviously we notoriously have had younger children, but that doesn't mean much. You know, anyone that needs it can have the opportunity to apply for it. Lisa? Yes, and also that is being posted on our Facebook page and also on our website. So you can share it, you can grab it and share it on your Facebook page. Um, get the word out there. Um, it's very easy to apply and we would love to see a ton of applicants this year. All right, uh, that's pretty much most of our our old business. Um, other than you know, April is take April first is take down tobacco week uh, or take down tobacco day, alcohol awareness month, and then there's also 420. Um, we're working currently with Ryder to see if we can do a big uh, 419 um, presentation. Uh, we're we're still working out those details, but. You know, if anybody has programming or some kind of event they want to do on 420, let us know. Um, I know that that Ryder University used to have a come get your pot day and they'd give you a potted plant <laughs> on 420. Which was um, hilarious. Because, uh, you know, Susan, those of you who remember Susan. Um, but um, if you have any ideas, you know, we could, we could try to help out. Uh, we're just trying to promote healthy living, obviously with marijuana being legalized. Um, it's uh, changing the narrative, especially for our young adults. Um, those, um, the applications are due on March 15th in regards to uh, cannabis right now. Um, there is a regional meeting tonight um, from seven to nine. They're going to be discussing how to spend the revenue that they're going to be earning. Um, I put in a word for prevention, uh, just like other states. 
um, and for beefing up mental health services. Um, that's that's my vote on where the money should go, but you know, I'm just one little voice in a big bucket. So um, if anybody wants to come and listen to see how that goes, um, you can. Um, now is the time that we open it up to any membership to talk about, um, oh, oh shoot, one thing, ooh, I swear I wrote it on here. One thing I wanted to make sure that you are aware of is that we now have two recovery meetings. We have oh, yes, all this is on there. We have an all recovery meeting on Wednesday nights. That's from seven to nine or seven on, I believe. That is virtual. We have now had the capacity to open up a new one. This is actually run by one of our from from one of our women warriors in recovery. She is um, going to be offering a noon session on Thursdays at noon. Again, that is virtual as well. That'll be run by Adrian Petta. Um, the other one is run by Dave um, DeCamp. And we love that people are utilizing these meetings to the point that we needed to have another one. And we're super excited that Adrian gets to be involved in this as well. So um, we will attach flyers to our notes, um, notes packets. And um, you know, feel free to promote those in any way. And I know everybody's kind of dropping like flies. Thank you so much for being with us. But if you have any announcements or any flyers, please send them to us and you're welcome to announce. Oh, Kelly, who's your coworker? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, so cute. <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> Sorry. Anyone? Hello. So cute. Um, oh, wait, uh, Jay Shree, did you want to talk about project graduation quickly? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, yes, for project graduation, we are planning to do the sticker shock. Oh, I think it's Anne, Melissa, Ruth, and me are planning to come together to do this event. After two years, we haven't been able to do anything due to COVID, but uh, very excited that uh, uh, we are planning to do this event and hopefully some more before the school ends. Yeah, that's all I have for project graduation. I'll have more in the next meeting. Thanks, Ruth. I just wanted again to mention the healthy outlooks for older adults that we have that program. Um, it's a one hour program. It's for senior adults, provides them information regarding medication use, management and alternative approaches to pain. And just like Stacy has said, and several others have said, you know, we put as women, we put ourselves on the back burner most of our lives. We take care of our husbands, we take care of our kids, we take care of our families, our parents. And then all of a sudden, you know, we reach our older ages and we realize that, you know, hey, wait, I've got pain and I need to deal with it. And we don't know how to deal with it. So this is a great approach to that. More information. Email me, my name and email is in the chat. Um, kind of going along with that, we also have a grant for tackling um, opioid use in younger athletes. Um, this is also a fantastic program that gives resources that kind of brings it to the attention of coaches, athletes, and their parents to just kind of talk about, hey, if you get injured, you get on pain medication, these are some of the things that you need to ask questions about. These are some of the things that you should try to avoid. These are things you need to look out for. So if any of you are involved with a rec team that have, you know, Little League or um, any kind of summer rec, if you have, if you're affiliated with any of the, of the sports teams at school, please reach out to me and I would love to, you know, do a presentation either for parents or athletic directors. We have some great, we have a great handbook of resources that we can um, distribute. So, Again, we have so many different resources that we want to share. We have different funding streams from a lot of other places, so we're not in competition with you. We just, um, you know, we just want to help where we can. All right, so it looks like people are starting to drop off, and we appreciate your patience. We appreciate all you do in your communities, and thank you so much for being here. We will be sending out the minutes packet by the end of the week and that will have all the brochures that we were talking or the flyers that we were talking about. And um, we will, we're going, we're updating our um, contact sheet right now, but we're gonna start putting all the emails together so that you guys can reach out to each other, uh, you know, when we're not here. Um, people were so generous of putting their information in the chat. So if someone said something, 
reach out to them. That's why we're here. We're have, we're a coalition. We're trying to build these connections to to help to help each other. Um, so thank you so much, and have a wonderful month. Go enjoy the snow. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> if you're everyone. in Mercer County. <laughs> If you're in Mercer County, uh, Seussical, the musical is opening at Villa Victoria this weekend. If you have children, you want to bring them. Uh, my daughter is in the production. And I also have raffle tickets, raffle tickets if anybody's interested. Oi. But anyway, have a great week. <laughs> Bye, everyone.